Today, we're feeling great at episode 188. My name is Paul J. Daly. I'll be your host. And today, we're going to talk about doing what you can do. Stop worrying about everybody else. <laughs> Let the good times roll. This is Clarity Compressed. I've had several conversations this week, specifically on the Clubhouse room rooms that I host uh, on the Clubhouse app. Little plug, if you want to know when the rooms are going to be, sign up at dealerspushingback.com. Dealerspushingback.com will shoot you out an email so you know what's going on there. However, these Clubhouse rooms, uh, we have them biweekly, and two rooms specifically this week were about big topics that involve big challenges and big problems and the sentiment is, what can we as a group do? The first topic was in the room uh, called Pandemic of Positivity. And we're talking about all of the conversation and all the venom and all of the, the tension and um, really the tumultuous nature, aggressive nature around the vaccine mandate last week and people discussing, you know, not pro or con you know, whether you're pro or con, but whether or, or not it's okay to have a belief one way or the other. And we talked about how can you have a disagreement without really victimizing almost the other person or being angry at them. And the second conversation was in a room called Women Inspiring Automotive. We were talking about the automotive industry and how it kind of has a PR problem. And one of those problems are it's a very kind of historically chauvinistic um, industry. You know, Mad Men, that, that show, talked about the chauvinistic nature of the ad industry back in the day. And automotive has had a similar pedigree, right? It's been kind of like the boys club, and that has changed a ton. You know, people say, well, it's the whole industry. It's not the whole industry, actually. It's not the whole industry, but there's this PR perception that it is. So the conversation in that room was like, well, how are we going to change that? What are we going to do to change that? And then the first room was like, they got all these, you know, these people that are angry at one another, that were used to be friends or should be friends or are friends maybe, but over like a certain situation, they're now kind of going at each other. Well, what can we possibly, what can we possibly do about that? And it's easy to look at these big challenges in life and think, oh my gosh, it's such a big problem, right? Look at politics, such a big problem. Look at all these global or even like nationwide situations, right? Where we think, what could I possibly do to fix that problem? How do we even start? Do we organize? Do we have organizations? Do we get together, right? And every solution seems to have, uh, can feel out of reach. And so as we talked about those things, I started to really cut it down and snip it down. And my answer was this in both rooms. We need to start. I need to start. You should start. I'm going to say you should and tell you what to do. But my, I would suggest you start by doing what you can do. There's this great scene in, I think it's the original Aliens movie where, you know, Sigourney Weaver is just, you know, fighting the aliens. She's all like beat up and some people show up and they were like, what can we do to help? And she's like, I don't know. What can you do to help? And that's <laughs> reminded, I'm reminded of that because we need to look and think about what are the things that we can control and we can do to help. Let me give you a hint. Complaining isn't one of them. Being upset isn't one of them, right? Natural response. It's okay to be upset. It's okay to feel those way, but it is not going to help the situation get any better. There's a phrase that I love. It's written on the board across from my desk so I can see it when I'm looking for here. And the very top, it says, what you cannot control, you cannot change. So if you think about what it is that you can control, it's yourself, number one. And then the next step is understanding what it is that you can do to help situations. In the first situation that I mentioned in the clubhouse room, we were talking about, you know, this disagreement on, you know, these issues and mandates and things like that. Well, what can I do to help the situation? Well, I can be empathetic. I can listen. I can do my best to empathize. And I can do my best to explain my position. Or maybe it's even just not get into the conversation and focus on promoting other things that aren't that conversation that build relationship and encourage and inspire, come alongside of, serve. I'm telling you right now, humility 
as a first step would change the whole landscape. Humility as a first step would change the whole landscape and culture right now. This, this element of like, I'm not going to say that I know best and I'm not going to die on that hill as a requirement for us to have a conversation or a relationship. That doesn't mean you're putting your beliefs aside. That means approaching it with humility. That's it. That would change the landscape. How about a little expressed empathy? Like, even though I don't agree with you, I can understand why you think that way. Can you imagine, just can you imagine, whether you watch news or not, whether you watch CNN or Fox or MSNBC or Newsmax, whatever it is that you watch, have you ever heard a newscaster at the end of like maybe giving a little bit of a, an opinion piece, right? We're going to call it news, but actually it's just an opinion piece to, to rile our side up against the other side and kind of weaponize each other against ourselves. Can you imagine if at the end of those, there was like, you know, if you have a Rachel Maddow or Tucker Carlson or Don Lemon, somebody at the end of their like diatribe say, you know what? But even though I believe so passionately about that, and I think that that's the right way to go, I can understand where they're coming from based on their belief. I can understand why they might feel that way. Can you just imagine the difference that would make in the situation? And guess what? We don't have to wait for Rachel Maddow and Tucker Carlson and Don Lemon. We don't have to wait for them to do it. You have the opportunity to do it. I have the opportunity to do it every day. They don't all have to be like political issues, but in most of life, whenever there's conflict, asking yourself, what can I do to move the needle? Because that is an area that you actually have control over. And if you have control over it, that means you can affect change in that direction. Start easy, start small. I encourage you to start with humility. Start with a servant mindset. And I guarantee you when you do that, that all of us together can affect much bigger change, much bigger um, movement in promoting a culture that cares for one another and a culture that wants to serve one another and understand one another. And if we do have a belief, what do you think is more compelling? Yelling, condemning, or inviting? One of my goals is that I build up such a track record and such a, a reserve of serving others, being kind, being empathetic, that when the time comes to talk about a tough issue, when the time comes to share a perspective, people will already know that I've started from a posture of humility and caring about them. I have a long way to go. I have a big reservoir to build up, but that's the journey I'm on. I hope that you will join me on that journey as well. And I think that together, little bit, little by bit by bit, this is something that we can do I hope you join me. I hope you have an amazing week. And as always, thank you for spending some time here with me. I will talk to you next time. We came to find